Congratulations on your new film. Um, if you guys want, can you guys take me through, especially Danny first, you wrote this screenplay. So can you take me a little bit through your process on how it it even came about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, this was, so I like to refer to this as the mistake pro project, the, the make your first movie and make all your mistakes on that so you don't make those mistakes again. Keep it low budget so that <laughs> the mistakes you make won't be that dire. Uh, as we, as the story grew, unfortunately, but fortunately, because I made a better film, the budget grew. And so it didn't end up being this tiny micro budget film that I initially intended it to be. But the essence of the story, always it always stayed the same in that it was intended to be this cat and mouse dynamic power shift struggle between these two characters who are sexually attracted to each other and and the the boundaries and everything that go out the window yeah. when that sexual attraction takes over and how there's like a physical response to things where the mental aspect of it the negotiation kind of you kind of lose sight of that so I definitely relate to that I think a lot of people do from what I've heard so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how where where the story began. And did you always foresee starring in it as well? I sure did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was the intention for sure. And Luke, how did you get involved? Um, I auditioned for the role. Uh, I was up in Vancouver shooting Sabrina, and I got this audition, and uh, I read through the script. And immediately loved it and immediately wanted to put myself on tape. Sometimes you get, and, and I'll preface that by saying, sometimes you get auditions for indies and you're like, this is just a steaming pile of nothing. I'm not going to put myself on tape for this. I'm not going to spend three hours learning and then doing it. Uh, yeah. And then with this, I was like, no, I, this is good. This is really good. I need to do this. Um, this is a really great, great character, great movie. And um, yeah, and, and never look back really as soon as I, put myself on tape I think it was only a day late or a couple maybe a week a couple days later that they reached out and said oh, you're, you're on hold or they want to know about your availability and for both of you the chemistry throughout this entire film I mean both of you guys said both of your characters are flawed but I think really in all honesty the chemistry really between the both of you shines so greatly during those moments those flawed moments and even the non-flawed moments so what was that for you guys to make sure to build that chemistry not liking each other. Not liking well, each other? I mean, you know, what we what we really had to do, or what we did without meaning to was, it was a cat and mouse on screen and it was a cat and mouse off screen. We didn't immediately become friends and then it was easy. Like we were arguing and we'd have little tips at each other. And um, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't getting along and being cute it was, it was hard work. And we also like argued about where the script should go, argued about lines. We rewrote little parts of it, um, together, but that was a budding, that was a wrestle. That wasn't just a easy, um, getting along. So, yeah, I mean, no matter what people say about the creative process, I think that it can go, there's a, there's a million ways to skin a cat and our way was to be kind of hostile with each other. And to add to that, I think what made such a difference for me was the fact that we met in person before we shot the film. Like we, I don't, I think you were in New York randomly at the time yeah. and I was living in New York and I remember you suggested it, Luke, you're like, let's link up and go grab a drink or whatever. And that for me was like, that solidified everything. I, I already knew from your tape that you were the guy, but meeting you in person and feeling that feeling the characters come to life I was like okay yeah we we got it yeah, <laughs> yeah. and with a lot of the scenes too because there are a bunch of very emotionally draining scenes for both of your characters there has to be a level of comfortability between the both of you to be able to kind of just um to be able to bring those kinds of scenes to life mm. and discomfort mm. you know yeah. like it's like yeah we have to be <laughs> it's so interesting because you know it's like well we have to feel safe as Danny particularly has to feel safe yeah. but also does she you know I'm like okay I'm not gonna you know 
that's what I'm talking about. The hostility, like we didn't get along. It was, it was, it was safe. Like I was never going to hurt Danny and she was never going to hurt me. I kind of hurt you when I tied your wrists to the bed. Yeah, some, not really, not really. And it, oh, I'm really? Because about- I remember you saying you were like, don't something about not tying it too tight. And I was like, oh shit. Cause I was just so in the moment. Like I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah. Nice. I mean, was I in character or was I me? I never knew. (laughs) Yeah. It's interesting. It's like, is it like, you know, that's, it's always good to feel safe. Uh, Is it, I don't know for Mm -hmm. in certain scenarios in creative moments, it's kind of good to feel a little bit unsafe, but you know, that's not for everybody. And I do not want to encourage any actor to go out there and make an, uh, people feel unsafe for the sake of creativity. It kind of like has to, it's a, it's a, it's a balance. It's a balancing act. There's nuance to it. And I don't know if you remember Luke, but we did do, a, we did have that conversation around boundaries. Cause I remember taking that from an acting class that I was in and, I, and uh, it, being like, what are we comfortable with? And it was very much like, you can do this. You can hit me. You can slap me. Don't hit me here. Don't touch me there. Yeah. Well, so, gosh, I wish I could replay that. What did we, t- what did I say? I think, you, I think from what I remember, you said I could slap you and hit you probably like, don't punch you in the genitals. I would imagine. <laughs> probably. I, yeah. I have a thing as well. Like I don't like being touched in the, like, I don't like being rubbed or smacked in the ear, um, you know, you know, when you get smacked in the ear and it's like by a palm and you can't like kind of hear, like it kind of like affects your hearing. That's like one of my least favorite feelings. I probably said something about ears. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) What did you say? I think I just said the same standard stuff, which was like, like I obviously wrote myself partially and scenes, you know, so I was comfortable with that, those types of that type of sexuality, I guess. And and you were like, I think, like, I think I saw your nipples on the first day. Thanks. No, but I did though. Which I'll is... make sure to send this interview to my dad. <laughs> yeah, he, he needs to hear this one. <laughs> he saw the movie, so it's done. It's okay, done. yeah, he gets it. <laughs> I mean, Father's Day is right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking, because you guys obviously speak on boundaries. I mean, I think this movie does a great job of showcasing just that boundaries, um, especially when it comes to social media, the line of what is considered private and what isn't considered private and how for you, Danny, important was that to bring that across screen? Because that is a very big conversation that has been happening ever since the rise of social media. So was that the question? Yeah. Was it, okay. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> the question was kind of how was it, how important was it for you to make sure that this came across screen that that this discussion of boundaries and where does it actually lie between private and public? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's. I feel like that theme trickles throughout the whole movie everywhere. So, uh, I do feel when it came to the script, that was really important to to explore that. Just, just to keep exploring. Because I think I find it the most exciting as a writer when I don't know what's going to happen and I go on the ride. And luckily having Sylvia, like Sylvia is not someone who will ever settle with anything. Like she, that that woman will work, that woman works harder than anyone I've ever met. So she was always pushing me to go deeper with the script. And I will say Preston Witt, who became, who was our script consultant on it, he did the same thing where it was always just pushing, pushing, pushing the characters to go deeper. Like what, as small as like tweaking one line, we'd, be, we'd spend two hours sometimes just talking about one line and what that meant and how much weight that could carry if we allowed ourselves to go deeper in it. So I'm grateful for, for Sylvia and Preston both to, to keep pushing there. And did this film give both of you kind of a different um, take or perspective on social media? Hmm. Um, no, I, <laughs> it didn't give me a new, it, I guess it did. Yeah. I mean, I'd never really thought about this dark kind of underbelly of, you know, uh, Danny understands it more of this kind of secret filming of people. Um, I'd never done that or partook in it, but I never understood that, that it happened, but it really does happen. It's out there and it's, happening all the time you can see it on tiktok today like it's and they like viral videos of people being filmed in secret and um it made me it but 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 the, the message is bigger than those things it's like how how do you use social media and if you're saying things about other people or secretly filming them 
it has an impact and you have to be responsible with that. The great, the thing about the internet, it is, it's a huge power and it has to be wielded with responsibility. Do we wield it with responsibility is a question for each and every person. And the answer, I think like most, a lot of the time is like, no, you know, we could be better with the way that we use our time and the way that we use it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just to add to that too, this theme of privacy, I just remember feeling that that was so important when I, because I first started writing this in 2018, end of the year, 2018, and cameras were just going up everywhere. And even in Ubers and Lyfts and all the different car services, like they were, it was still kind of new around that time that you were being filmed everywhere you go. And I just remember feeling so weird about it. Like you'd see cameras up on traffic lights. That was a scene. That was one of the Mm -hmm. scenes in the movie initially was having a, her go through an intersection at the end of the movie and there being a camera on the traffic light. (laughs) It's like, we're used to it now, but in 2018, it was still strange. I think that and also for you guys specifically, you know, actors a lot of the times are recorded by whether or not they're fans or strangers outside of their own consent. And you see the a couple of times throughout the film where your character, both of your characters are being filmed without their consent, um, right. which, like I said, you guys kind of experience that more so than the normal person. So was that kind of enlightening for both of you to just kind of be like, hey, this is something that actually happens in our real lives. And now we are bringing it to life in a film. Yeah, definitely. That, that there was intention for sure there to, to have that in the script and <laughs> bring that to life. Yeah. And then um, the ending, I don't want to spoil anything that happens in the ending, but can you talk through, Danny, your de- your decision to have that be the ending where it's kind of just, again, don't want to spoil anything, but it's kind of left to the audience. Uh, I will say that, yes, there was, there's sort of two endings to this movie. And so the original twist was there from, from pretty early on. And then the second ending evolved um, again through working with Sylvia and and Preston and really diving into what we wanted to leave the audience with and wanting to leave the audience with something. You know, we didn't want things to just all be wrapped up in this perfect bow, but rather leave people, have people leaving the theater with questions right and and questioning their own use of social media and what and those boundaries for themselves and what they think is right and wrong so yeah i feel like i feel like the ending does a good job of that but it took a while to get there we were i was writing the ending when luke and i were filming on the last days of set yeah so the ending and then we didn't even shoot the ending till a year after everything that was shot in the barn so it was it was kind of cool in that way that we got to create the ending out of what was already shot and and craft it with the story that that we knew from what we filmed. It's very on brand for your characters in the film too. With the, <laughs> yeah. the improv, let's improv everything. <laughs> um, so for my last question, what do you guys want viewers to take away from this film? I think I've already, I think I said it earlier, but I, I feel like a responsible use of of the internet a responsible use of your social media to make sure if you're, you know, mocking somebody or if you're revealing who somebody, you know, revealing the actions of somebody else that you're really keeping in mind, would you want somebody to do that to you? Do you think that's fair? Do you think that that's a good use of your, of your energy? Um, so yeah, responsible use of social media, I think is my big takeaway from the movie. Yeah, I would agree with that uh probably more so than anything else and and just taking precautions when we're meeting people that we don't know has always been you know you have to be smart about it <laughs> and not be so quick to just go meet at someone's I mean I certainly have I've gone out on first dates and met at people's houses and I've just been really lucky but we do have to be careful sometimes you know and and follow our instincts around that uh and uh, yeah, my other hope is that people, uh, 
take away, see, see the opportunity in this film and that we can go forward and make this into a series one day. Yeah, that would be, that would actually be really great. I was like thinking that while I was watching the film, I was like, this could be a very like interesting limited series or series in general with just how many twists in each episode could focus on each person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it could be really cool. Either that or a trilogy, but I, I think I'm more excited by the idea of a series. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Once again, congratulations on your film. I can't wait for everyone to see it. And thank you for speaking with me today.